was born in Tlenetti in 1894. That is 82 years ago. I have been away from Tlenetti for over 60 years. I am still a Tlenetti boy. I am also a Welshman and an American. And I'm proud of being the three. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> America is a land where men mold metal and metals serve men. But Tom Jeffries was molded in Wales. Once there were many like him, but not anymore. God, Father! Hey, come on, Father! Hello there, boys. Come on, let's go, Baltimore. They're doing very well, considering this mud. I've seen worse, much worse games than this. I've been on Stratty Park and Cardiff Arms Park and all of them and seen much worse than this. You watch these boys now, that they're not fumbling very much. They have a good knowledge of the game. It reminds me, do you see that team in black and amber? Yeah. Well, now that's a Newport colour back in Wales. Oh, yeah. And uh, Finetti had a lot of trouble with Newport. In 1905, Finetti had some difficulty with the referee and the decisions by the referee. So they threw him in the water, throwed him into a little ditch running alongside the ground there. And uh, when the team got into the break, as we used to call it, more of an open bus, to go back to the hotel, we picked up all the dirt we could find and threw it at them. But when they were ready to leave, we started singing, God be with you till we meet again. Well, we didn't meet again for 20 years. In 1925, I went back from this country and I saw the renewal of the fixtures at, on New, Rodney Parade in Newport. And Panetti got beaten badly by Newport. Gary Shea was at his prime then, one of the great players for Wales. And they swamped Panetti. Panetti came out the second half, only 12 men. And that's how they finished the game up, 12 men. Now they've renewed their fixtures and they've played ever since. <laughs> but now they're all glad to play Panetti. They all like to play them, don't they? Well, they are the greatest team in the British Isles. When did you stop playing? I stopped playing in 1923. Toronto, Canada, I played for the London, for the Toronto Welsh. That was my last game. I was 29 years old at the time. And I had started when I was a boy, about eight years old, in Copperwork School in Tenetti. And I was picked as a reserve to play for the Welsh schoolboys. I was only 12 years old at the time. I never went further than the seventh grade. Seventh grade is my limit because I started working the tin works when I was 12 and a half years old. We had good training, been trained by the men from the first team, of course. So I had good training, it was in our blood. Internetty, rugby was the king. If rugby was king in Internetty on Saturday afternoons, for the rest of the working week, tin plate was master here. It was an industry which has moved into history. There are now no more hand mills making steel or tin plate in Llanelli or in the rest of Wales. But this rusting machinery was once the hub of a unique community. And one of its leading historians is Professor Glanmore Williams. This looks for all the world like a junkyard. And indeed, it was a junkyard until a year or two ago. But in fact, these are the remains, and the most complete remains, of one of the old hand plate mills of the tin plate industry in the Tenetti district. It was in mills of this sort, hundreds of them, that men like Tom Jeffries of Baltimore, thousands like him, learned those skills and that craft that made them some of the most highly specialized and highly skilled industrial craftsmen in the world. They helped to found the tin plate industry in Russia, in Spain, in Italy, in Belgium, in India, as well, of course, as in this country and in the United States. In the city of Baltimore, Eastern Steel now makes no tin plate in its modern plant but its history goes straight back to those hand mills of Llanelli in Wales. Easton's automated machinery now handles not tin plate, 
but stainless steel of the highest quality. But the plant was built back in the early 20s by a family of Joneses from Llanelli. Well, Tom, it's nice to have you back. Oh, it's nice to be back. And again. I'm not the only one that thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got that sign up there. <laughs> I knew you would love it. I knew you would love it. Yes. Yeah, but we yeah. have to watch the trucks now. Yeah. Well, it's nice to be back with yes. you. Yeah. The quality of Eastern Steel is no longer Tom Jeffrey's job. He has left it to others for 15 years now. But this is still recognizably the world in which he spent his working life. A world of men, metal and fire in America as in Wales. And in both countries, the industry has changed enormously in the lifetime of Tom Jeffries. Well now, this place is entirely different now to when I came here in 1920. Everything was done by hand. We used coal fires, exactly as if it was over in Wales. The furnaces, the same type furnaces, doubling machines to double the iron when you try to make two out of one. And one foreman would run 12 mills. And each mill then would have maybe five or six different orders every day. There was five mills working for Henry Ford, and there was five mills working for Chevrolet, General Motors. We were working five, six days a week, but one thing we did, if we'd get a 10,000 ton order, we'd work seven days a week until the 10,000 ton was out. And if there's no more orders after that, well, we were idle for a couple of weeks. The family that started this mill, J.M. Jones, John Morroods Jones, took the name Morroods because they had worked in the Morroods mill in Clinetti. And every one of the family took the name Morroods. So when JM took over, every supervisory job in Eastern was held by a Welshman. Most of your roller men were Welshmen. Quite a few of your heaters were Welsh. And they were all from around Swansea, Clonetti, Morriston, of course, and a few from up around Port Albert. In the last century, Great Britain had a monopoly of tin plate manufacture. And for all practical purposes, that meant it was a Welsh monopoly of tin plate manufacture because most of the tin plate works were located here in Wales. <laughs>